In chapter 9, we're going to learn how to describe in data through tables and graphs. So the second step of statistic is organizing your data. So in chapter 8, we learn how to collect data. Now we're on to organizing data. So when we organize data, we're going to organize into a table or a chart. Let's start with tables. So a frequency table. So this is how you construct frequency table. Now, if your data is categorical, here it is. Right, so we've done this before. It's called tally. Okay, so we have the blue, green, and red, and then we just say frequency means how often these occurred. So if you look at these, one, two, three, four, five. There's five blues, four greens, five red. Now to find relative frequency, it means to, instead of just how many times it occurred, give me a percent. So in in this case. Uh, blue showed up 35.7 percent now how do i get this number you take your frequency divided by the total frequency so when you add these up there are 14 numbers so blue is 5 out of 14 that's how we get these numbers the relative frequency okay bar graph you guys seen bar graph before it's just pretty much taking the frequency table and then graph the frequency with it blue is at 5 green is at 4 and red is at 5. A Pareto chart, it's a it's a type of bar graph except we put in order from the highest to the lowest. So instead of putting them in order blue, green, and red, well blue and reds are a lot higher in green, so we're gonna put them in in um in the order of um, the height. That's a Pareto. Now we sing pie chart. That's another way to do this. Now these numbers, how we get these percents, these numbers are coming from the relative frequency so these change these into percents then you have what we call the pie chart All right now remember when you do a pie chart you want to try to approximate the uh, area so where it makes sense 35 35 these are all about a third of the pie remember the whole thing has to be 100 percent Pictogram, that's another way of uh, displaying data. Sometimes we see this um, in a newspaper article. So right away we can see the managers earning a lot more than the workers. Um, you can say double, you can say triple. I mean, it's not, it's very, it's visual, okay? But um, it's not very uh, informative. You, I mean, we only know the manager earn more than worker, but we can, we can always say about twice, about three times. Some people might even say that. So it's hard to tell exact number, but we do just know manager works uh, definitely have more than worker. Now, some problem with um, representing graphing of the data. Like, look at this graph right here. Okay, blue, red, and green should be the same size. Remember from a previous example. Where um, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, if you download the um, the original um, the original notes from um, from my open math, then you will see these label a little better. So make sure you know thirty percent, thirty five percent, thirty three percent. I mean, they all should be about the same size. Shouldn't be a big difference. And we add up all the percents. Need to be equal to hundred percent. Okay. If it's not, then it's not correct. Another problem is if you look at these two charts, very deceiving. Looks like this one has a lot higher, a lot more people, or a lot more subjects, and a lot more data, which is not true. If you look the scale, this, these, these are all up to like this number right here is actually two thousand. This number up here, I mean, if you look, it looks even though it looks a lot taller, but look at the scale on the side. So in order to compare something and get two different set of data, you need to make sure all label has to be the same, same scale. Otherwise, it's very deceiving. Okay. Now, for quantitative data. How about data that's in numbers? <clears throat> like for example. So we can do the same thing with tally, like what we did before with um, with the colors. So if you look at these, we have 85, 98, 100, 110, 115, 138. There are six different um, type of data, number number data in here. We do the same thing. We find the frequency, how many 85s, how many 98s, how many 100s. And we do the same thing with relative frequency. You add the all the frequency up, you get 16. So to get this one, you get 4 divided by 16, 2 divided by 16. 1 divided by 16, 4 divided by 16, 3 divided by 16, and 2 divided by 16. So, same as before. Now, what histogram, and <clears throat> we graph something called a histogram instead of bar graph. The biggest difference between the two is bar graph is for categorical, and if you have a numerical or quantitative data, 
you want to use histogram and histogram don't have space in between be very uh, aware of that okay it's unlike bar graph there's spaces um, because numbers are continuous data so number continues while um, categorical are very distinct or discrete okay so i uh, just make sure there's no um, bars uh, no no space in between bars and you have these numbers that's your x-axis and frequency is the y now what's more interesting is what if you have a large data set look at this data set here that's a lot more than the previous one if you take one number at a time you're going to have a really really long table so what you want to do instead of just you know one number per entry you want to do like a, a interval like I'll find this to that number okay so we call it a class interval right okay so what how do I how do I find out this interval okay so the way to do it is this you look at your data set you take the biggest number which is 460 minus the smallest number and divide by 8 now where did I get the 8 they will preset that for you in this particular question they want to divide into 8 classes okay so once you divide this and then you get 40 now that number is this is what you do with the number so again now our smallest number is 140 so we start at 140 then be careful we're not going sideways we're building downwards first so it means going to the next class you require you to get 40 to get the next class so take 140 plus 40 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 that's how I get all those numbers now how do we get this number now since when we get plus 40 you get 180 so the one number before 180 is 179 so once you figure this number you do the same thing you keep adding 40 then you get second set of number all the way down okay then after you do that then you go through all this one by one and tally them how many of the numbers that's in this original data is between 140 and 179 including 140 and 179 there's four numbers then same thing with the second one how many between 180 and 219 okay including 180 and 219 only one number is in that and you go all the way down to frequency relative frequency is the same thing you take the frequency divided by the total frequency okay now midpoint is new I'm putting a different color here now midpoint is taking this two numbers right here you add them up divide by two we're going to use this in example 911 later on okay this number right here these midpoints okay all right so now once we have this frequency table we can do a histogram as well okay now the histogram is a little bit different if you look at the number in the, the first set of number 140 180 220 260 those are the number that goes right here that's how I get those numbers and for the first bar for the first bar it go up to four second one goes to one and then four so on so forth so first bar go up four and then one and four it just keep going now remember histogram for quantitative data okay um do not have a spacing between them otherwise you'll be doing a bar graph frequency polygon now that's those number we find earlier okay so to do something called frequency polygon you take the midpoint graph against the frequency okay in like unlike histogram you use these first set of number which is called a lower class you take the lower class and then you graph against the frequency and for polygon frequency polygon you take the midpoint graph against the frequency okay so you take each of the midpoint each of the midpoint and then its corresponding frequency you dot them out and it just connect them and there's your there's your um frequency polygon 